Shemuel Shani, 2 Samuel 14. Now Yoav, the son of Seriah, perceived that the king's heart was toward Av Shalom. And Yoav sent to Kehoah and fetched thence a wise woman and said unto her, I pray you, feign yourself to be a mourner and put on now mourning apparel and anoint not yourself with oil, but be as a woman that had a long time mourned for the dead. And come to the king and speak on this manner unto him. So Yaav, rather Yoav, put eth the words in her mouth. And when the woman, a Tikhoi, spoke to the king, she fell on her face in the ground and did obeisance and said, Help, O king. And the king said unto her, What ails you? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman, and my man is dead. And your handmaid had two sons, and they too strove together in the field, and there was none to part them, but at the one smote the other and slew him. And behold, the whole family is risen against your handmaid. And they said, Deliver him that smote at his brother, that we may kill him for the life of his brother whom he slew, and we will destroy at the heir also. And so they shall quench eth my coal which is left, and shall not leave to my man neither name nor remainder upon the earth. And the king said unto the woman, Go to your house, and I will give charge concerning you. And the woman, a tikoe, said unto the king, My lord, O king, the iniquity be on me and on my father's house and the king and his throne be guiltless. And the king said, Whosoever says aught unto you, bring him to me, and he shall not touch you any more. Then said she, I pray you, let the king remember at Yahuwah Eloheka, that you would not suffer the revengers of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son, and he said, As Yahuwah lives, there shall not one hair of your son fall to the earth. Then the woman said, Let your handmaid, I pray you, speak one word unto my lord the king. And he said, Say on. And the woman said, well, Wherefore then have you thought such a thing against the people of Elohim? For the king speaks this thing as one which is faulty, in that the king does not fetch home again, eth his banished. For we must needs die, and are as water split on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither does Elohim respect any person, yet he devises means that his banished be not expelled from him. Now therefore that I am come to speak of eth this thing unto my lord the king, it is because the people have made me afraid, and your handmaid said, I will now speak unto the king. It may be that the king will perform eth the request of his handmaid, for the king will hear to deliver eth his handmaid out of the hand of the man that would destroy me and eth my son together out of the inheritance of Elohim. Then your handmaid said, The word of my lord the king shall now be comfortable, for as an angel of Elohim, so is my lord the king, to discern good and bad. Therefore Yahuwah Eloheka will be with you. Then the king answered and said unto the woman, Hide not from me, I pray you, the thing that I shall ask you. And the woman said, Let my lord the king now speak. And the king said, Is not the hand of Yoav with you in all this? And the woman answered and said, As your soul lives, 
my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord the king has spoken. For your servant Joav, he bade me, and he put at all these words in the mouth of your handmaid, to fetch about this eth form of speech has your servant Joav done eth this thing. And my Lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of Elohim, to know eth all things that are in the earth. And the king said unto Joav, Behold, now I have done eth this thing. Go therefore, bring eth the young man eth av shalom again. And Joav fell to the ground on his face, and bowed himself, and thanked Eth the king. And Joav said, Today your servant knows that I have found grace in your sight, my lord, O king, and that the king has fulfilled Eth the request of his servant. So Joav arose and went to Geshur, and brought Eth Avshalom to Yerushalayim. And the king said, Let him turn to his own house, and let him not see my face. So Avshalom returned to his own house, and saw not the king's face. But in all Yashadael there was none to be so much praised as Avshalom for his beauty. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he pulled at his head, for it was at every year's end that he pulled it, because the hair was heavy on him, therefore he pulled it, he weighed at the hair of his head at two hundred shekels after the king's weight. And unto Avshalom there were born three sons, and one daughter, whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of a fair countenance. So Absalom dwelt two full years in Yerushalayim, rather Yerushalayim, and saw not the king's face. Therefore Absalom sent for Yoav to have sent him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. Therefore he said unto his servants, See, Joab's field is near mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set at the field on fire. Then Joab arose and came to Absalom's rather Avshalom unto his house, and said unto him, Wherefore have your servants set eth my field on fire? And Avshalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent unto you, saying, Come hither, that I may send you to the king, to say, Wherefore am I come from Geshur? It had been good for me to have been there still. Now therefore, let me see the king's face, and if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. So Joab came to the king and told him. And when he had called for Avshalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. And the king kissed Avshalom.